Mary turned her own head, began to swim those tree-laden shores as though her very life depended on it. As it probably did, she thought with a touch of panic. Bruce rowed steadily. The boat was a cross between a rowboat and a canoe, she decided. It was light, pointed at one end, and it skimmed easily across the lake water. She found herself swaying easily to its movement. At any other time, she would have enjoyed this boat ride very much. As it was, her hands gripped the gunwales and she cowered inwardly, expecting a rifle shot any second. They were far away from shore in a little while. Bruce seemed to relax, to row more slowly. It was as though danger had slid away from them. Are we safe now? She asked. It'll take a good marksman to hit us. Not that I think Red is a poor shot, exactly. But back in Boston he should have hit me. If I'd been behind his gun, I'd have scored a hit. But maybe I was just lucky. Amy shivered. She sat very still and watched the farther shore come closer. When are you going to fish? She asked. Just as soon as I come close to that tangle of fallen trees ahead of us. Fish like that plays to hide between the submerged trunks and branches. He must have seen her eyeing the trees behind it, because he said, nobody will shoot at us from there. I'd hear them long before they reached a spot to fire from. I hope so, she whispered. After a time, Bruce slid the oars in the boat and began to bait hooks. One rod he handed to Amy. Drop the line over and let it out while I row. We'll troll for a time and see what happens. He moved the oars slowly and Amy did as he instructed, letting out more and more line until the bait was far behind her. Then she sat and held the pole with her finger on the line as Bruce cautioned. When nothing happened, he told her to reel them. They did the same thing on the way back to the tangle of fallen trees. Again Amy reeled in. Now I'll cast, he said, and stood up, taking the other rod. She watched him draw back his arm, then send the plug flying out across the water. Twice more he cast, reeling in slowly each time. On his third cast, Amy saw and heard the reel whiz as something caught the plug. Bruce gave a satisfied grunt and began to reel him. He paused at times to let more of the reel out, then reeled in faster. Presently Amy, by leaning over the water, saw a big fish desperately fighting the hook. The net, Bruce said. Mine turned to me. Her eyes searched the boat frantically. What net? What was he talking about? Under your seat, love. Her fingers found it. She handed it to him. Deftly, Bruce slid it underwater, maneuvered it, then scooped. The fish, still battling, was swept upward. Water flailed the air as Bruce moved the net toward the boat. Then he deposited the fish in the boat. Amy stared as the base flopped about. He's a big one, Bruce said with satisfaction. Here's our dinner. Amy looked at him. In a small voice, she asked, who cleaned him? I'll take care of everything. All you have to do is bring an appetite to the table. For the umpteenth time since she had met Bruce North, she felt very inadequate. He knew how to do everything, or just about. Still, she was out of her element here. If they had been in Boston, she would have been very efficient indeed. Twice she licked her lips before she managed to say, Teach me how to prepare it, Bruce. He glanced at her, surprised. You really want to know? Yes, I do. Amy could not have put her finger on the exact reason why she wanted to learn how to gut a fish and scale it and prepare it for eating. She doubted very much whether she would ever get the opportunity again, except for the day she spent up here at the time. Of course, if she were to marry Bruce, she would have to learn how to do these 